Hello everyone, good afternoon or good day or good morning depending upon where you are. <clears throat> Let us see who we have on the lobby today. I see few people who have joined. Hello to all the people who have joined and uh, if you can introduce yourself and see who we have on the community then we can get started. I'm going to give it a couple of minutes so that um, other people can join and then uh, we will go ahead and get started for today's session. And for people who have been waiting here, we have planned an excellent session. We are uh, doing uh, the API series where we are looking at the different options of uh, developing the best practices of APIs and then securing them and uh, using options like API keys, authentication or um, WAF and things like that. So in that series today, we are going to see something similar. Uh, we are going to see how to do CI CD. So I'm going to give a couple of minutes for uh, everybody to join and once we have enough people uh, then we'll go ahead and get started. So since we are waiting, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself. Are you somebody who is already using AWS? Go ahead and put in the chat window either one or yes I am using uh, AWS or two for example if you are new to AWS you have never used APIs or Lambda functions. So let us see who we have and then based on that uh, we can change the depth of the content and adjust the context a little bit. And also a quick sound check. Can you hear me loud and clear? You can put in the chat window if you can hear me loud and clear as well. Okay, one person has uh, volunteered to say that they are using AWS and um, I would like the session to be interactive so that uh, we have more people coming and joining and uh, see who is using and who is not using and based on that we can adjust the context of the session as well. Uh, even if you are new, it's fantastic, you can pick up some things. Uh, if you are not new, if you are already using it, fantastic as well. So just a quick question for the people who are using it. Are you using VMs or uh, Lambdas and APIs or containers and Firegate and how long you've been using it? So there are quite a few people, a mixed bag, somebody is using, somebody is not using. Okay, it is uh, one minute past our schedule time. So what I'm going to do now is <clears throat> I'm going to get started. And um, meanwhile, if you have anything uh, to put in the comment section, uh, you can go ahead and put. But uh, once you have, once we get the session rolling, then we will have some housekeeping rules on how you want to interact with me so that I can look at the comments. So let's go ahead and uh, get uh, started here. So today's session is uh, going to be API design for performance in that series. We are going to look at how to create uh, Lambda versions, how to create Lambda aliases and how you can use those uh, features along with uh, something called as API stage variables and stages so that you can release uh, new versions of your Lambda function into production. So that's the session today. We'll go ahead and see how we can do all these things uh, in a short while. So. A brief introduction about me. I'm Kumar here. I'm a solutions architect and I have been doing AWS for almost five years now and doing architecting for almost close to 10 years. I've been in this industry for quite a long time, seen many things and built a lot of things. Some of my code that I have built, some of the automations that I have done, uh, some of the architectures that I have done all are presented in uh, uh, YouTube, in the Galaxy channel. And I also created a couple of courses uh, in um, Udemy, which is structured way of learning uh, certain concepts like automation or security. You can find the links in the description of this video as well. And all the code uh, that I do are quite often open sourced. Not all of them, but at least most of them will be open sourced and you should be able to find my code in my GitHub repository. And the URL is uh, what you see here. Uh, if you like my code or uh, if you find that it's uh, working great, go ahead and give them a star 
or fork them and if you find some improvements uh, go ahead and send me the pull request i'm happy to merge them and uh, we can learn and build a better community so that's about me and let us uh, find out what we have in session today so today's session is going to be at an intermediate level we are going to talk about uh, what is api and uh, looking at lambdas and versions uh, we are not going to look at a very beginner stage of what is api and uh, how to configure lambda we'll be assuming that you have the knowledge of what is an api gateway what is a lambda and then we will build on top of that uh, so if you are not familiar with uh, those concepts go ahead and check the playlist uh, either uh, the live stream playlist or uh, the other aws automation playlist or beginner series in our channel you should be able to get some context and uh, this is the housekeeping rules so if you have any question during this session go ahead and use the chat window and within the chat window go ahead and use the hashtag hash questions and if you have any suggestions for next demos or any queries of uh, if you want me to increase the font size or volume uh, just go ahead and say hashtag quick suggestions uh, then my pop-up filter will uh, pick it up and i should be able to see it so uh, that is the housekeeping rules for the session and uh, where can you get the code so quite often all my code is in github and for this uh, session that we are going to see as well that should be in github url as well so you should be able to clone it or fork it and do it along with me as well so we have set the context let's go ahead and get started so i'm going to give you a brief introduction of what is an api for people who might not know what is an api and we will dive deep into what exactly the session is all about and we are going to look into that so when you are talking about an api which is an application program interface it enables you to define and contract uh, for your clients. It might be a web application or a mobile application where your clients are interacting with your backend services. Your backend services might be a ticket processing or payment processing or inventory management, anything. So it is a contract between a service provider and a service consumer. And API Gateway allows you to manage, uh, build and deploy these APIs at scale. It allows you to do configurations like versioning, authorization, logging, security, and all of them you can do it for multiple APIs. That is what APIs and API Gateways offer for you. So a typical API um, logical flow looks like this. You have the client on the left hand side which throws in the request and typically it is received by an api server and that api server depending upon the request if it has the information it will send back the response if it doesn't have the uh, uh, response then it will go and ask the web server and the web server will generate the response for you by talking to the database or computing it internally or uh, uh, getting it from cache or sending it back all the way to the client and this is how the entire flow looks like you have all been using APIs in every single day. For example, you use a Facebook or a Twitter app or a PayPal or Amazon Pay uh, from Amazon.com. For example, uh, you are using an API on the back end and the interface abstracts all that information for you. So if you go ahead and deploy this in AWS, uh, what we can see is on the extreme right hand side instead of a database, you will use something like an uh, DynamoDB or a SQL Server like a Aurora or MariaDB, anything like that, depending upon your application. For a web server, uh, here in this use case, uh, we are going to look at a Lambda function, uh, which is serverless, a compute platform, uh, very easy to deploy and very easy to manage. And likewise, uh, we are uh, going to use API Gateway for our API server. So this is where most of the magic is going to happen, where the API Gateway is interacting with your Lambda function. So how are we, uh, when we are talking about APIs, uh, how are we going to manage multiple versions of uh, Lambda versions? For example, you have released a code, it is working fantastically, then your developers are working on a new development uh, or a new feature, and they want to try it out for some people only before they can release it for everybody. So how do you roll out new versions of your Lambda functions without impacting your production workloads? So how do you do something like CICD in your application for Lambda functions? If it is in our server, you understand you can go ahead and roll out the application code, but Lambda functions, how will we do that? So that is what we are going to see now. Let us say you have a Lambda function and you have version one, your code is absolutely working fine. On the back end, uh, you have your Lambda function hooked up to your API gateway and everything is working great. 
and you our developers are coming i have this new feature and i'm going to start developing new versions and slowly what happens is you have more and more versions coming into your lambda functions so each version in aws lambda is something immutable once you publish a version for example you cannot go and modify it if there is a bug or a defect uh, let us say you have published version 2 and you have a bug in version 2 and you want to fix it the only way you can fix it is by bumping up the version so it will become version 3 so your version 2 code will always have the buggy code and version 3 only will be the perfect version so to help this concept of uh, having a buggy code not to go into production amazon allows you another concept called aliases what this alias means is you can create an alias for a particular version say for example your developers are going to work on lambda and the dev alias will always point to the version that you are wanting it to point in this case it is say for example uh, version 9 it is pointing to and you can also create a, a test alias what this means is uh, it, it can be moved to any versions like for example you can point it to version 5 or version 4 or any other version so it is just an alias and likewise you can have a prod version which is lagging your dev and test environments so aliases are something which are mutable pointers which can move front and back so you can use this concept of uh, aliases pointing to different versions when you are deploying uh, new versions of your lambda functions so let us see how this works along with uh, your uh, api gateway for example so you have your api gateway and uh, inside your api gateway uh, you will have multiple stages for dev and test so we are going to use a concept called stages and each stage will have a stage variable so i'm going to create a dev stage which is nothing but my development environment for my lambda function and everything using this url will be pointing to my dev environment so i'm going to say use a lambda alias called as dev for my development stage likewise i am going to have an url specifically for this dev stage alone uh, where the url itself will have the stage variable as well as you can see in this end uh, it is appended with the dev likewise if i want to go ahead and do a test environment i will create a test alias and the test alias will have a different url so what this happens is uh, each environment will have its own url and you are independently testing them independently developing them without impacting your production code so automatically we saw in lambda aliases right we can point it to different versions so that is what we are going to see now so we have got our stages we have got our uh, lambda alias also then what you go ahead and do is we just go ahead and map them we map the dev stage on our api gateway pointing to our lambda function alias on dev stage likewise the test as also is being mapped to our lambda function and production is also going to get mapped to our prod alias so this way you can have backend pointing to different different versions but your front end urls will not change so basically if you have deployed a mobile application uh, you don't have to ask your users to update so that uh, new features are released on the back end your front end code does not have to change and your users don't have to update the app every now and then just to get some new features on the back end so you have separating the development of your front end and your back end and uh, uh, you can release new features without impacting uh, each either component so this way you can have CICD uh, accelerating really really fast so this is how it works uh, uh, if we move a little bit forward let us say your test version is today pointing to point uh, not five version and tomorrow uh, you are wanting to move it to point not six uh, then you say that okay point not five version is good for production then all you have to do is just take your prod alias and start pointing it to point not five and automatically all the new requests that are going to come is going to hit your latest lambda version code so this is what we are going to see how to use this concepts in real life how to do this in uh, aws lambda itself how to configure them so this i'm going to deploy a couple of uh, uh, lambda functions and api gateway as well behind them uh, or in front of them and then we will go ahead and see how we can do this and see whether it works or not so if you are going to follow with me the code is all available in github you can go ahead and try it along with me you can clone them and do it along with me as usual if you have seen my previous um, live streams we are going to start deploying and start from there and we are going to spend more time 
understanding why we have configured certain things in a certain way uh, instead of spending time clicking on the console. So most of the stuff is automated. So you just don't have to listen and uh, learn. You can also do it along with me and find out uh, how it works and then uh, see how you can modify it in your own code. So let us go ahead and see what is the demo that we are going to build today. And we are going to build two different architectures. The first one is an uh, API without stage variables and without Lambda aliases. So you will have a client and if you have an API gateway and you will also have a Lambda function and any changes you make to this Lambda function uh, automatically gets published to your end uh, user. So that, that is not what we want. We want to have a different environment for our test users. We want to have a different uh, environment for your development environment. Uh, users so you can try out a different versions and then release buggy code so in this case this is a bad api we don't want to do that we want to fix this so we are going to deploy one more api which is going to have stage variables and also have lambda aliases and we will go ahead and see how we can make some changes to the lambda function and uh, we also will see how to deploy this and see on uh, your console whether the changes are reflecting or not so we are going to deploy and get some URLs and uh, I can publish them in the chat. So you can also participate along with me and confirm to me whether the URLs are, uh, or the demo is working as expected. The URL should see, uh, you should be able to see some uh, output on the screen, which helps you to quickly visualize and identify what changes has been made and uh, what parameters have changed. So, uh, as all of this automation is built using cloud, AWS Cloud Development Kit or CDK, uh, if you are interested in learning more about uh, AWS Cloud Development Kit, uh, there is the course link below this uh, video description. Go ahead and try them. Um, if you are just here to listen and enjoy the story, just uh, you are welcome for that as well. So I'm going to take you to my uh, GitHub article where the entire code is there. And then we will go ahead and uh, see in our console what resources are going to get built. So let me take you to my uh, GitHub article now. So you should be able to see my uh, GitHub page. The URL is there, as I said in the description. So. I have already cloned this repository. All the instructions that you need to do this demo are written here. I have tested it with a couple of people in different regions and they should be working fine without any issues. If there are any issues also, go ahead and raise them in the issue section. And uh, if you are interested, go ahead and send me a pull request as well or star them as well. So uh, as I said, I have already cloned it in my local repository and then I've created the virtual environment. We are going to start at step four so that uh, we can go ahead and build them. And, and uh, right now I don't have any other APIs apart from this campaigns API. Let us ignore this for a moment. We will be building two different APIs. And for this demo, I'm going to use the Virginia region. And uh, I don't think I have a Lambda function. As you can see here, there are no Lambda functions. So let us uh, go to our uh, Visual Studio code and uh, start building it. As I said, I'm starting at step four and I'm already in my virtual environment. If I go and do a CDK LS, it is going to list me two stacks. Uh, one is a um, poorly architected bad API. Another one is a well architected API. So you have this uh, anti-pattern API without any stage variables or without any uh, Lambda fun function uh, versions. So we are going to deploy this. I'm going to show you what the stage variables means, what the Lambda aliases or Lambda versions means. So once this gets deployed into my account, let us go ahead and see why this matters and why you should do this in your account. So while this is going to deploy, I'm going to quickly have a look at the chat window to see if there are any questions. And as I mentioned, if you have any questions, use the hashtag questions, then I can pick it up easily. Or if you have suggestions, use the hashtag suggestions um, so that I can see them. So I don't see any questions which is relevant uh, to the demo that we are doing. If there are other questions which is outside the context of this demo, or uh, API Gateway or Lambda, then we can do them at the end. So we have our uh, 
stack getting deployed are you able to see the text uh, should i increase the font size or can you just quick uh, quickly confirm on the chat window okay there is an update saying that they would like to see the I'm going to try and increase my font size slightly bigger. Oops. Let us make it 22. Okay, I hope that is better. So because we are going to spend much time uh, on um, on the uh, Visual Studio because we have deployed the stack and we have got this URL and uh, if you go ahead I'm going to put this URL in the chat window and uh, if you go ahead and access this URL uh, you should be able to get a simple greetings message so let me also put it on my browser so that we can see what happens here so let me open another window and uh, can you also confirm on the chat whether you are able to see a message as uh, I am showing it on the screen. Uh, you can see here there is a message which says uh, hello from mystical world. How is it going? And we will also see a message saying API stage, no stage variable defined and Lambda version. Uh, there are no versions which is pointing to the default version and also a timestamp. So I'm just going to check the chat to see if anybody else has uh, got an, a similar response on the screen. And then I will go and show you in API Gateway and Lambda what these uh, stage variables are and where are these Lambda versions if you have not known what they are and where they are configured. Okay, fantastic. There is one person who is confirming it is working. So I'm going to take you to my API Gateway first and we should be having an anti-pattern API. Let me refresh my screen again. Looks like I need to do it this way. Oops, probably I deployed it in another region, I guess. Oh, US East one. Let me just quickly check what region I'm deploying. Oh, probably I'm on the wrong uh, account just give me one moment what i'm going to do is uh, i probably deployed it to a different uh, using a different profile i'm just going to deploy it in this account just give me one moment I have set up multiple profiles and uh, it must have got set up in the account uh, which I'm using for a dev test. So it should not be a problem. I'm just redeploying it. We should be getting a new URL and uh, we can go ahead and uh, check it out. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to check in the cloud formation. Yeah, I can see a new stack that is getting deployed. Um, there is an anti-pattern API and uh, hopefully it should be completed because it's a very simple stack, just an API and the Lambda. We should be getting it completed in two or three minutes. So in the meantime, did anybody else uh, try the URL? Did you get the response as I showed on the screen? If I can, I can just show it, Kane. Can you just quickly confirm on the chat that you are able to see the response? Okay, we got our anti pattern API, we got a new URL. I'm just going to put in this new URL as well on the chat so that uh, you guys can try it i'm going to use the same window and then send a message and we should be able to get something similar here
so you can see here uh, this is the uh, response which says that there is no stage variables defined in my api stages so if i go to my api gateway and to my anti-pattern api and under stages if i go to my stages i just have to click on here not on the resources that are created here under stages you will have something called as stage variables and in this case i've created a stage called prod that is why on the url also you have slash prod here and the on the URL that I pasted on the screen also you will have the slash prod as well. So under stage variables as of now this lambda, uh, this uh, particular API does not have any stage variables defined. So it is directly mapped to my lambda function um, uh, latest alias. So if I go to my lambda function and if I go open up my function here under qualifiers usually you will find very interesting information that uh, version as well as the alias. So you can see here by default I have only one version and I have an alias attached to it which is called as Mystique Automation and Amazon also creates a default alias which is unqualified and it is always pointing to latest. So any changes that I make here, for example, let us say I'm going to change this uh, greeting text, uh, for example, so I'm going to say hello from Mystical World, how is it going uh, from Anti-Pattern API. So I'm still, let us say I'm still developing this application. I don't want to publish this, but if I, the moment I go ahead and just save this and go ahead and execute this API, what is going to happen is my changes are published and it is already available for the entire world to see. I don't have a mechanism of uh, testing in the backend and then releasing the code to the production. Uh, if you go ahead and try the URL in your own browser also, you should be able to see this additional text that we just now added and saved it. Um, how is it going from anti-pattern API? So this is what we want to avoid. So this is where the API stage variables and Lambda versions are coming up. You can see here the Lambda version is pointing to the latest and not to a new version. So I'm going to deploy another stack now, which is going to uh, show you how you can configure API stage variables and Lambda versions as well. So let me take you to my Visual Studio code. So here we are in the Visual Studio. I'm just going to go ahead and deploy the other stack. As I said, we have written the entire stack in CDK. CDK is nothing but a way of writing cloud formation templates using programming languages like Python or C Sharp, not C Sharp, uh, .NET or uh, TypeScript. So in this case, I've used uh, Python to write the cloud formation code. So the code is nothing but doing all the resources in um, the way that cdk expects it so i'm going to deploy this in a short while we should be having our uh, api deployed with stage variables and uh, lambda versions as well so let me give it a minute and then uh, talk about what has changed from the previous one I'm just waiting for my stack to get deployed. Meanwhile, let us uh, go to our uh, AWS console and see what is getting uh, updated there. So here we are in the cloud formation console and we have our new stack and let us go to resources and see what is getting built right now. I think uh, we are done here or almost because um, the API uh, should be the last resource that is getting deployed. So we have a uh, creation complete. So let us go to our API console here and uh, we are in the anti-pattern API. We should have one more API that is deployed, which is called as, uh, it should be called as a well-architected API. So you can see this well-architected API here let us go ahead and see what happens here and um, while this is uh, deployed right so we can check it out in the url also in the output section we should be able to find the url and if you put this into the browser let me also put it in the chat so you guys also can try it out so when you put it on the chat what happens this time is uh, you will have a very similar message 
but uh, in this case what is going to happen is uh, you are going to have uh, API stage which is uh, from the stage variable that you have configured and whatever lambda version that you have on the back end is also going to be sent along with the response so in this case i am triggering a lambda version which is version one so what uh, we will go ahead and see what uh, what, where, what and where is these things configured and then we will make some changes we will publish a new version and uh, we will see whether we are able to point prod to version two so let us go to our api gateway first and uh, remember we are in the stage variable uh, stage called as well architected api and a well architected api go to stages and if you go to stages there will also be in prod stage and under lambda uh, stage variables i have created two stage variables here one is called as a lambda alias another one is called as an app owner and one of the stage variables uh, lambda is pointing to prod so where is this helpful here so if I go to my resources section and when I want to do an integration with my Lambda function and uh, if I go to my integration and request, you can see here, let me see if I can zoom it out a little bit. So you can see here for Lambda function, I'm saying greeter well architected API colon prod. So I'm forcefully saying this is the particular alias I want API gateway to hit on the back end whenever a request is coming. So if you have a dev alias or test alias, automatically I will go ahead and update them and uh, my uh, API gateway is going to look at the particular version this alias of Lambda is pointing at. So we already saw where is the alias in Lambda. So let me go ahead and open the well architected uh, pattern. So here we have the greeter function well architected uh, code and uh, under qualifiers you can see here there is a latest uh, version and also a version 1 and my prod is pointing to version 1. So if you go to the versions there will be two versions under aliases you will find the different aliases that you can set up. Uh, th as this is the first time I'm going to deploy it I've just pointed dev and prod at the same version so you can have uh, multiple versions and uh, you can have different uh, uh, pointers having looking at the different versions as well. So what I'm going to show now is I'm going to update this code and publish it. So like last time what we are going to do is I'm just going to say I've just mentioned it as a, another message also but uh, how is it going from well architected API. So I'm just going to save this. So my code has been successfully saved but if even if I uh, since a prod is pointing to version one and I have not uh, created a new version in Lambda you have something called as a concept called as publish a new version. So if you go ahead and click a publish new version. So I'm just going to say updates to well architected API. I'm just going to copy this and then publish. So we will have a new version of our Lambda getting created. You can see here this is pointing to Lambda 2 but if I go to my Lambda 1 it is immutable or uh, let us go here versions version 1 it will still have the old code it will not have any of the changes that we made so let me just go ahead and find out the code you can see here the changes that we made to this line does not exist here we just added some text which says uh, from well architected api and we are at version 1 and it does not uh, have those changes but if i go to version 2 for example you will have those changes and likewise, if you have, I, I messaged the URL in the chat, if you go ahead and invoke the URL, you will still be pointing to version one only. You will not be pointing to version two. So I'm just going to show you that. So this is the well architected API. I'm going to leave this browser as it is. I'm going to another window. And uh, you can see here, this is the new re re response I received from the API. And it is still pointing to Lambda version one. So just to be sure that this is a different timestamp than the one that uh, we have it here. So this was some time back and uh, this is uh, executed about seven minutes back. So how do I point, let us say you have tested your code, your version two is fantastic and you want to publish your version code, uh, version two code to the public. So how do we do that? So all we have to do is go here and go to your uh, alias and point now, your prod is pointing to version one. What we need to do is we need to point our prod to version two so that version two will be the alias that gets invoked. So all you have to do is go ahead and select prod and you have version one here. Just go ahead and edit 
and then instead of version one you go ahead and say version two so basically we are promoting our code from a dev test to production i'm just going to have a descriptive message saying uh, updates to well allocated api a descriptive message so now my function code is saved and if i go ahead and invoke my url i should be able to see the version 2 on my screen so this was the version 1 so i'm just going to copy this url again and put it onto the browser and i should be able to see version 2 here so you can see here this one is automatically picking up version 2 i can do this change any number of times and promote the code from version 2 to version 3 and automatically my api front end will be pointing to a new version on the back end um, unless you change the alias it is going to stay at the old version only so this way you can test different versions of your code on the back end and uh, promote your code only when you're confident that this code is working and everything is fine so this is how you do uh, CICD in Lambda with uh, Lambda aliases and Lambda versions and along with the stage variables. So uh, that is all I had uh, for today's session. It's a very short and a simple one. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, then I am I'm happy to answer them in the remaining time. And uh, one kind reminder is if you have questions, go ahead and use the hash questions uh, hashtag otherwise i will not be able to pick it up from all the other chats that i'm receiving and likewise if you have some suggestions go ahead and add the hashtag suggestions uh, then i should be able to pick them up uh, from uh, all the other messages that i'm getting so i'm going to look at my uh, chat now Did anybody else uh, try uh, this on your screens? Did you get uh, new versions on your screens? Looks like we have a very quiet audience today. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wait for another couple of minutes and then if there are no questions that are coming up in the chat or if there are no topics to discuss, uh, then we will see again in the next week in the next demo with API Gateway. So I'm just going to scroll up and see if there are any other questions. Okay, I'm just um, waiting for somebody to, to see if there are any questions. I'm just putting the URL again if you, anybody wants to try it again.
okay looks like uh, there are no questions which are coming up here so in that case uh, what we will do is uh, we'll wind up for today and see you in the next uh, live stream next week on uh, something related to having persistent storage for your lambda functions and apis so until then go ahead and give them a try give them a thumbs up if you don't like it um, give them um, your suggestions and feedback in the comment section uh, we will read them and uh, give our responses wherever appropriate thank you very much for joining today have a great friday and have a great weekend